Good morning, VVC. Good morning. It is a great morning to be here. I hope that you all have just a spirit of being thankful this morning because I have that in my heart. And just to be able to see, you know, the beautiful thing that we saw before all of us and we got to partake in is just being able to be grateful for the things that God has done in one of the families here at our church. And like Min said, one of the biggest blessings, of course, is having a child. And to see the blessing and to see just the gratefulness that Joel and Patricia had on their faces. Whenever Pastor Khan was praying for Hannah, it was just something beautiful to see on the faces of the parents. Because it's not only just an answered prayer. It's not only a miracle. But it's a sign from God that he loves them. And it's a sign from God that he promises that our children and our future children will be blessed by him. Because that's the kind of God that he is. And I saw just on the faces just the gratefulness, number one, that Hannah was born and she came at the right time. And number two, she was an answered prayer, something that Joel and Patricia have been asking for and the Lord showed them. And Hannah's here. And the third, of course, the thankfulness on their faces as parents that their baby didn't cry in front of the entire church. I think that also, Grandpa probably had the same look on his face. Thank you, God, that my grandchildren didn't cry. But something that I saw just in front of all of us here, to partake in something that God is showing us, that even in our 2020, that people may claim being one of the worst years ever, how can you claim that it's the worst year when we just stood before God and stood before everyone here giving praises to him that a child was born? That's something that we have to have a grateful heart for, and that's something that I want us to speak about and talk about today is that no matter where your 2020 is, it's not too late to be thankful. No matter where your 2020 is, it's not too late for our God to change it. Amen? No matter where you are in this place, no matter where you are coming into this room, no matter where your heart is, all it takes is for you to have a choice to be thankful and a choice to choose joy. And that's the series that we're talking about today. We're talking about choosing joy. And Pastor Khan has spoken about it. I'm going to touch on it today is that we have a choice in our lives to choose different things every single day. And one of those things that we want to talk about is choosing joy. And what does that look like in our life to choose joy? And what does it look like in our life to have joy? And what does it look like in our life to make a decision on our own with a reaction to choose not only joy, but this morning to praise God, to give God praise? See, I want to talk about something really quick that every single morning when we wake up, we all make choices. Some of us wake up and make good choices, and some of us wake up making the wrong choices. What does that look like? Some of us wake up early enough so that we can have breakfast in the morning. Good choice. Some of us wake up and we have a time where we just calm our minds, get ourselves ready for our day. Good choice. Some of us made a choice the night before to prepare our clothes for work and have it out so that you're not running around trying to figure out what fits and putting stuff on and says, oh, well, I look fat in this. I'm not wearing this to work. I can't wear this. I just wore this two days ago. And some of us make better choices by waking up early to avoid sitting in traffic. And then there's the rest of us who make the choice to wake up just with the right amount of time to scurry out the house. There's many of us that make the choice to skip breakfast, but we just grab whatever we can find on the counter, whatever piece of fruit we can grab to eat and drive at the same time. Bad choice. Many of us choose to maybe just grab a cup of coffee because that fuels us better sometimes than eating food. Bad choice. And some of us, at times, would choose to get out of the house just in the nick of time, thinking that's enough time to get to work. But you forget that there is traffic in Houston in every part that you can find, and that's even at a stoplight, that's even at a stop sign, there's traffic in Houston somehow, some way. There's good choices and there's bad choices that we make every single day. And to the amount of how great it may matter in your life, to the amount of how much it may change your life, it's also up to you. Because there's some days where you wake up and you make that choice of maybe waking up just in the nick of time to roll out of bed and find whatever's clean and throw it on and grab whatever you can grab to eat and grab and try to, you know, make whatever cup of coffee you can make to run out of the house. 
But that was the choice that you made. That was a choice that we have to live with for the rest of that day because you can say tomorrow, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wake up earlier. Or I'm going to prepare my clothes ahead of time. Or I'm going to wake up so that I don't have to sit in traffic. And for me, when I think about choices, it's my choice to wake up. And the first thing I say is, thank you, God, for today. It's my choice to wake up and say, God, you're still good. That no matter what I saw on the news the night before, I still wake up this morning saying, God, you're good. And that is your choice. And that many of us, we need to flip that. Where we go to bed watching something like the news, or we go to bed on our phone and seeing what's happening in our world. So when we wake up, we're worried about the day. Is that going to happen in my city? Uh, how's, how's it going to be at work? Like what? I got to choose my words carefully in case I offend somebody at work. Like, make sure you, you don't say this thing. And you feel like you're stuck in a place where if you say something or if you move a certain way or if you make a hand gesture or if you do anything or walk around with no mask, you might offend somebody. And then on the flip side, there's a choice for us to say, you know what, no matter what's happening in our world today, it hasn't changed who God is. No matter what happens in our day, no matter what we see on the news, it hasn't changed who he is. Just because the things that are happening in our world didn't change his name from Jesus Christ to nothing. He's still Jesus Christ. And what situation can change who our God is? Nothing. And that's a choice that we have to understand to make, is that we cannot allow anything to take away our joy. And we can't allow anything in our lives, any decisions that we make, to take away the fact that our God is still good. And that is our choice. And this morning I want to talk about your choice. Your choice to praise God. Your choice to wake up and your choice to be a part of His plan and be a part of what He is doing, and that is your choice. And it all starts with choosing to praise God. Now what does praising God look like in our lives? What does praising God honestly affect our lives? Because, Pastor Sam, to be honest, I've woken up days where I didn't praise God, and my day was, mm, it was okay. But I want to ask you a question. Have you ever woke up praising God and saying, that was a great day? Because I guarantee you, I promise you, 100%, you try it, and you tell me the truth. Because I've woken up days where I, I, I didn't praise God in the morning, and I woke up in the morning where I was in a, in a frenzy and a panic because I woke up late. I chose to not eat breakfast. I chose to just, eh, I'll find whatever's clean, whatever's hanging. And then 10 outfits later, I finally find something that fits. And I made the choice to get out of my house late, and I sat in traffic, and instead of praising God in my car, I was actually really mad about everybody else that was around me that was late too. Why didn't you wake up earlier? And that's the choice that I have made. But I've had mornings where I wake up and I started off right. As soon as I wake up, I turn on my worship music, I turn on my praise music, get my mind, get my heart ready to not only be used by God for the day, or, but just to be in his presence, just to say, God, hey, whatever happens in my day, it's still you and I. No matter what happens in my day, no matter what work looks like today, no matter what coworker does what to me, whatever, what person says to me, it's not going to do anything because I choose you and I choose joy. And that's a tough decision that many of us are still in the line of choosing, do I choose it every day or do I choose it sometimes? But whenever I ask you this question, and, and, and this, this, is a, this is a question that some of y'all may ask yourself. Do, do you brush your teeth every day? I think so. And it's a choice for you to brush your teeth every single day. And it's a choice that you've made ever since you were younger to brush your teeth every day. Just like the same, it's your choice that you wake up every single day to put on a pair of shoes because you know that you're walking around everywhere and you chose to put on shoes. So when we can make these choices of the basic things in life, of brushing our teeth and putting on our shoes, which do matter in our life, what about the ultimate choice of all, which is choosing joy and praising God, making that choice? That weighs much higher than putting on your shoes. That weighs much higher than a lot of choices that we make in our life. But why is it sometimes that choosing joy and choosing God and choosing to praise him sometimes so tough in our life? Why is that? Why? And I want to get down into the points on why I think it's, it, it's perfect for us to choose him and choose 
to praise him. And what does that do in our life? Because the things, when I start listing out the things on what is so good about it, you'll start to see why you don't do it. And, and, and whenever I put this message together and I saw that, I, and, and, and I was asking the Holy Spirit, what, what benefit is there for somebody to choose to praise you every morning? Because here's the thing, the angels do it 24-7. But, but what choice, do, we, we have a choice. And what good does that do for me? If, if, if I wake up in the morning and I choose to praise God, does that mean my business is going to be blessed that day? If I choose to wake up in the morning and praise God, does that mean that my marriage in the morning is going to be great? If I choose to praise God, does that mean that I'm not going to have a tough day? If I choose to praise God, does that mean that I will be safe all day long? If I choose, does that mean that I? If I choose, does that mean I? And here's the problem. When you choose to praise God, it's not about you. It's about him. And see, many of us in our life where we come to choices, it's what we choose that benefits us. And this is where I'm getting at. When we choose to praise God, it's not only just a benefit for us, but others around us. And there are decisions that we make to choose joy and to choose to praise God that not only affects us, but if you wake up in the morning to praise God, does it affect your marriage? I guarantee you it does. I guarantee you waking up on the wrong side of the bed but turning on worship music can change that side that you woke up on. I guarantee you that the choices that you make in your day on the way that you speak to people, if you chose to praise God in the morning and you chose to choose joy through him, you'll be joyful in every single situation that you come in contact with. And no matter how difficult that person is to you, the fact that you already chose joy and you chose to praise God that day, it'll change your situation. Let's look at scripture and see what it says. I want us to look at Psalms 100. A praise of giving thanks. And we'll have it up on the screen. It says this, Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Now when I look at a psalms like this, and I read the things that are written in these psalms, I think to myself, well, that's great. What a great, like, this is like something that's like a precious moment kind of thing that you probably see. This is like a hallmark thing that you, you read in a card that you give to somebody that's a Christian, right? Oh, God bless your day. But when we look at the scripture itself, and if we can apply it to our life, and we can see how we can actually use the scripture to apply to the things that we go through in our life, it changes it. It changes it all. Why do you give a card to somebody on their birthday to celebrate them? Why do you go and choose the card that you choose? You know, here's the thing. For me, sometimes I look at cards and I'm like, eh, 99 cent section for cards. And then I start looking. That's my choice. That's my first choice. And then I start looking, ah, what's funny? What, what card can I choose? There's no one in my life that I know more than my wife that takes forever to choose birthday cards, thankful cards, or whatever. And she reads every single card. I don't know who does that except my wife. She, I can go around the entire store of Target maybe two times before my wife has even gone through and finding one card. That's not enough, though. She finds one card, and she thinks, maybe this one's good, too. And instead of coming out of the store with one card, she comes out of the store with three birthday cards. Because here's the thing. In all of these cards, she's choosing to offer or give just a word of encouragement to this person. And it's her choice that she has chosen to look at each card and says, what specifically fits this celebration for this person's life? And she looks through the cards and she finds it. Now, if this was a card for our life, and I was to give you this card, or you were to write this for your life, and it said, shout with joy to the Lord all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him singing with joy. That's one of those cards that you give to somebody that needs just a little bit of a boost in their life. That's one of those kind of words of encouragement that you give to somebody that really needs a change in their atmosphere. That's the kind of words that we read in the Bible that tells us if we shout for joy, if we give God praises, just wait and see what happens. See, because here's the thing. Acknowledge that the Lord is good. He made us and we are his. That's a fact. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. And that's true. When I read the scripture and when I see the scripture, it makes me want to choose joy because why? 
God is good. And number two, why, what's another reason why? Is because we acknowledge that the Lord is good. Not only that, but we get to be a part of his flock. He has chosen us. It is a choice that he made to choose us. Now it's on you. Have you made that choice to choose him? And I'm not saying just sometimes, because everybody can just do sometimes. Everyone. Everyone can just make a choice to choose sometimes. But how many of us are ready to be in that place where we choose him all the time? And we choose to have joy all the time. There are many of us in this room who can say, I choose to love my significant other every day. There are some in this room that say, well, that's not that easy, Pastor Sam. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this 100%. When you choose to love God and you get that love first from him, choosing to love others, you got it. You know why? Because when you aren't filled with love from the source, when you're not filled from love from the purest love of all, what kind of love are you giving out to other people? I want to ask you a question too, and you can check back in your life. There's been a day, maybe this past week, there's been a day, maybe this past month, there's been a time, maybe this past year, or you're currently still in it right now, where you might have made the wrong decision to not choose joy, where you may have made the wrong decision to not choose to praise him. And I want to ask you, what was the cause and effect of that in your life? Because I'll tell you this, there is an effect of choosing God every single day. There's an effect of choosing joy every day, and there's an effect on choosing to praise God every day. If you have your notes out, I want you to take this note down for the first point. And it says this, choosing to praise God helps us, number one, acknowledge that he is good. That's the first thing that choosing to praise God does for me. It's to help me acknowledge that he is good in my life. And what does it mean to be able to acknowledge that he is good? Because here's the thing, many of us just know, many of us can just say, yeah, I know God's good. But what about acknowledging that he is good for you? What about acknowledging that he has chosen you? Acknowledging that. Because here's the thing. To just acknowledge that my wife loves me, eh, that's, that's, I mean, to just know that my wife loves me is one thing. But to acknowledge and understand that, hey, my wife, she chose me, I chose her, we're for life. That's the acknowledgement that I also have with Jesus is this, that it wasn't me that chose him, it was him that chose me. And he told me, and he's told all of us that he's never going to leave us or forsake us. That acknowledgement in our mind helps us to understand that when we choose joy and when we choose to praise him, that acknowledgement shows us. It shows us that he is good. The first part about this point, acknowledgement that he is good, is you have to understand that the choice that you made to choose him is something that is good. And when you get to that place where you can find out what does it mean that God is good, and what does it mean that the choice that I made to choose him is good? And I'll ask you a question whenever you wake up and whenever you make a choice in your day. Whenever you wake up to make whatever decision you have made, you know when it's a good choice and you know when it's a bad choice. There are many of us in this room who wake up in our morning and there are many of us in this room who go throughout our day and we choose things that actually help us benefit to the next, to the next, to the next. And one of those things, for instance, for me is it's as simple as this, for my health. There are many, many options that I can choose that are not good. There are many, many, many options that I can choose that would actually not be good for my health. There are also many options I can choose that are great for my health. And for instance, I was uh, talking to Julianne, my sister, on Friday. And she said, hey, what do you think? How many pies should I get for the church on Friday? My instant reaction. Three. Three of them. Three of them right away. And, and she said, well, which ones? Strawberry rhubarb? Apple pie? Pumpkin cheesecake? And I knew the choices right off my head. And I knew that's not going to be good for me at all. But I'm still going to choose it. And you know what? It's been like probably a couple of weeks now that I've been watching just a little bit of what I've been eating just to make sure that I'm taking care of my health. And on that day, last Friday, just a couple of days ago, I chose to eat two pumpkin cheesecakes. And boy, did I regret that decision. I, most of you guys know that I'm a type 1 diabetic. 
I had my alarms on my monitors just beep, 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 beep all day long. And I just thought, ah, was it a good choice or was that a bad choice? And I felt sluggish at the end of the night. I was so tired. And it wasn't the right choice for me. Now, sometimes in life, we've made the choice to choose the things that aren't good for us. And I don't even have to name out these choices because you already know what's good and what's wrong for your body. And we already know the choices that we have already made or choose to make in our future that aren't good for us already. But I'll give you one choice that I know that is good to acknowledge that he is good in your life. That's the number one choice. That's the number one thing that happens when you choose to praise God. It's a choice. The second thing that I want to talk about, acknowledging that he is good. You will soon realize that in our world that we live in today, always is the opposite of what God is. It's always trying to tell us the opposite of what he is, especially in our 2020. We all can say, we all can understand that there are a lot of things that we can list off the top of our heads that went wrong in 2020. There are even things that I see. There are even like, you know, GIFs or memes or whatever you want to look at online of a calendar of every single month of 2020 that had something that went wrong in 2020. But here's the thing for me. I choose to choose joy and I choose to choose that God is good. And I've got a list that can counter every single thing that went wrong for every month. And you tell me that your 2020 isn't good and I'll tell you, did you choose God though in 2020 or did you choose to listen to the world? See, for me, here's the thing though. Everybody says, oh, 2020 was rough. 2020 was tough. Churches closed down. All these kind of things. You know what? For me, it actually made us stronger. For me, you can ask myself and, this, and the VVC students, meeting online, being able to meet with people from out of, out of state, being able to talk to one another, being able to still communicate with one another even though we weren't able to meet, that's a plus in my book. You know why? Because before 2020, we didn't really do that that much. What's another plus for me through all of this to know that he is good? In 2020, where people were spending their times worrying, my family, we spent time together. We spent time to be with one another, to be grateful for God that he has given us one another. And I'm talking about, we, we've done, we did things that I didn't ever think we were going to do. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, we were sitting in the back of my parents' backyard around a little fire that we had, singing worship music in their backyard. We'd never done that before. We, we, we rented an inflatable movie theater to watch in the backyard to hang out with one another. We were choosing to choose joy during a time of, of crisis. We were choosing to choose joy during a time where it was dark. We found light through Christ. Because we acknowledge that he is good. That no matter what the world wants to tell you, hey, you've got to see in your mind and in your heart that he is still good. There are many people in this room, many, many people in this room that I, can, I, know, I, I know a good amount about that you've told me. 2020 was actually, it, it was tough for a lot of people. But you know what? It was strange. God blessed my business. I was talking to Kim. She said, God literally took care of the daycare for us. When we thought that a lot of shutdowns were going to happen, God opened up the doors for even more opportunities for us. I said, praise God. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of students that said, honestly, Pastor Sam, I know school shutting down was rough for a lot of people, but I actually get a lot of work done. I said, praise God. And some parents have told me that they've been spending time with their family like they've never spent time before. They go hang out with their kids and take their kids out. They've been, for us, for the Wynn family, we, We've been spending a lot of time outside, and we enjoy it because we acknowledge that he is good in our life. Church, get to that place where you can acknowledge that he is good in your life, and that will help you to choose him and to choose to praise him. What's the second thing when choosing to praise God? What does it help you? Choosing to praise God helps us to acknowledge his love for us. Now, choosing to acknowledge that he is good and choosing to acknowledge that he that his love is for us is a totally different thing. Why? Because every single day when we make these choices in our life, and, we, and I'm, I'm constantly talking about these choices because that's what we use to navigate our life is, do I do this? Do I do that? Do I do this? And do I do that? But what happens as a Christian when you make the wrong choice? 
And what happens as a Christian when you choose the opposite of God? And this is where a lot of us actually are at. I, I, actually, Pastor, I'm, I'm not in the right place. I, I can't even get to the place where I acknowledge that he is good. I'm in a place, Pastor, where I've chosen every single wrong decision. You name it, I've chosen it. I'm in a place where, uh, who is God? Because all I see in the world is all the hate and all the things that are happening. Who is God? And for many of us in this room, the choices that we have made have led us to a place where we've actually stripped ourselves and pulled ourselves away from God. And that's the choice that we personally made. But do you know what changes every single thing about the thoughts that we just had? Or do you know what changes, this, changes everything about the thoughts that you may have that say that God doesn't love you anymore? Is the fact that when you choose to praise him and when you choose joy, you acknowledge his love for you personally. In the Psalms that we read, in Psalms 100, it said, he made us and we are his. He made us and we are his. So even when you make the wrong decisions, his love for you is infinite. His forgiveness for you is infinite. And we see that with the power of what he has done on the cross for us. When, he did, when you didn't even know him, he already gave his life for you. The sacrifice to choose you. And for many of us, it seems as if, well, hey, Pastor Sam, that, that, that's really tough for me to actually comprehend in my mind that he died on the cross for me because like, that happened a long time ago. But let me ask you this. Have you ever done something wrong and that weight of heaviness on your heart that you did something wrong just sits there and you feel like, why did I do that? I'll show you what it looks like for me. I make the wrong decision. Oh my goodness. And I just pace back and forth in my house like, why do you say that? Why'd you do that? And I can't be the only person because I see a lot of y'all do it sometimes too. You're just like pacing back and forth like, oh, why, why? And you're just questioning. And you know what about that though? What changed everything for me? Is when I started to understand that it's not even about me. That God already knew that the things and the choices that I was going to make wasn't always going to be right. But the love from a father that loves you unconditionally and a love from a father that loves you even when you make those mistakes is the love that you get to receive from your Father in heaven and to know that he loves you personally. How do you get to the place where you know that he loves you personally? There's a relationship that you have to have. There, there, there's, got, there's got to be a sacrifice in your heart to love him even more than any other choice you can make in the world. Why? It's because you have to know that the choices that you make in the world that may not benefit you, the choices that you make in this world that actually bring harm to your life is nowhere near, nowhere close, nowhere even that you can imagine how good it is to choose something from God. Because that's perfect, because what he has planned for you is good, perfect. That's in his will. <sighs> Plans for you to prosper, not to harm you, to prosper. And you know something about this, acknowledging his love for us? is when you can understand that he loves you and that he forgives you, whenever you make decisions and choices, you come and ask him, hey, Holy Spirit, what should I do, actually? Can you, can you give me some kind of direction and guidance on what I should do? Your father loves you so much, he will actually help and share you with those things. Hey, Pastor Sam, I hear that, but that's never happened to me. How far are you in a place to where you fully give him control to trust what he does for you? On Friday, I spoke to the VBC students inside this church and other students that join us from the young adults. And I told them, I said, you don't even know the ripple effect that you have in your life when you choose God. When you choose to understand that he loves you personally and the skills and talents that you have in your life, when you're able to use them for his good, you don't even know the ripple effect that it has on others' lives. Because not only does he love you, he loves everyone else around you. And when you understand to be used by God, you can help people see Christ through you, through your life, through an example of him. And on Friday, we had two students who, who stood on stage the first time before their, their peers, just only their peers, to do their act of worship, to dance, to, to, to finally put forth an act of worship to Christ that they have practiced and, and, and took time to learn on their own. And not only did that dance affect their life, it affected mine. And I'm not the only person that has anything to say about that. 
You ask Kevin Tran. Kevin Tran at conference said, I don't know what it was, but the moment the flags went, I was crying. I said, me too. And there's something about it that your act of worship, your act of understanding that he loves you, and that you want to show it not only inside your heart, but with your entire life, with the actions that you choose, with the actions that you are going to make, it can affect everyone around you. Let me tell you how I know that, that there's, a, there's an effect to that. Because I know that whenever I see a student who is on fire and another student recognizes that they are on fire, they want to be on fire too. I recognize when there is a chain reaction of a, 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 a igniting of the flame, igniting of passion in your heart for Christ, when you get around somebody that doesn't have that passion, you will rub off on them. You will. Because when you understand that he loves you personally, there's nothing that will change that. Not one thing, not one decision, not one choice can change that about him for you. And that is where we need to be. It's because he chose us. The last one that I want us to share and talk about is choosing to praise God helps us acknowledge his sacrifice. Acknowledge his sacrifice. So what is his sacrifice for us? What did he actually give on the cross in order for us to have the life that we live? See, here's the thing. It's one thing to, to know Jesus died on the cross for you. But it's another thing to acknowledge and understand what he truly did for you, where there's an effect on your life. And for me, there's people in my, lives, in my life that has done things that have affected my life from that point further. And there are some things that happen in my life that actually, they, it only affects that one little moment, that one little thing. One thing when I think about sacrifices, I think about my parents. And, I, and of course, a lot of us in this room can think about our parents with the sacrifices that they have made. The sacrifices that they have made for their children to not only succeed in life, but not just their children, but your children too. And that's the love and the sacrifice that a parent makes. And you know one thing that I've realized and one thing that I've noticed is the sacrifice that my parents have made to help all of us as siblings to understand you love and care for one another. Every single one of y'all. For all of us. I mean, we hang out with each other almost like every single day of the week. And some of you may ask, well, I can't do that with my siblings. Do you get tired of them? Yeah, but I still love them, and I still hang out with them every single day. Sometimes I come over to the house, and we come over to my mom's house. Almost, almost, it's almost every single day we go to my mom's house. We do everything that we need to do. What's for dinner, mom? I don't know. Come over. Let's eat. And we all come over and hang out. And there's a sacrifice that my parents have made to help us all understand as siblings. Family matters. Being a part of a family, it actually really matters. And the strength that you have in numbers to serve God with one another, that matters. And if you are in a place where your family is struggling, if you're in a place where you feel like your family is not together, I want to ask you a question. Have you personally acknowledged his sacrifice for your life so that it means so much that you need to tell your other siblings or you need to tell your loved ones? Does God matter to you that much? Does Jesus matter to you and what he's done for you matter that much in your life, personally? That it's spilling over to where every single person you talk to, that's the most important thing that you can tell them. Or is the most important thing that you tell them the latest thing that you bought? Or is the most important thing that you tell them is just, oh, okay, like, what, what'd you do today? Or how was your day? Or do you ask them, or do you challenge them, or do you even pray for them? Because understanding what Jesus did for us, is it worth it for you to tell the world about it? Is it worth it for you to tell one another about it? Because there is a strength in numbers. And one of those things is this. I had a Zoom meeting with uh, three of my students. And I said, you know what, guys? You tell me. What have you been learning? You tell me. who wants to go first? And I just left it at that. It was kind of quiet at first. I said, all right, fine. So-and-so, you go first. And they started sharing. And when they started sharing, I said, dude, you could preach that. Next student, go. I was, I was even shocked even more. I said, wow. Next student went, wow. 
I had to like look away because I was like, whoa, that was a tearjerker. Because here's the thing. These students that I'm meeting with, they understand and they know the sacrifice that Jesus has made for them and they care so much to get close with him so that their other friends will understand who he is too. One of the students said to me, hey, Pastor Sam, one of the toughest things that I'm dealing with right now is that when stepping up for Christ and when speaking out about God, there are people that come with hate and negativity. What do I do? I said, what are you doing about it, though, personally? That student said, I'm just going to keep saying what, what God is. I said, you keep doing that, girl. You keep doing that. Why? Because when you understand the sacrifice that he has made for you, there's nothing else worth more. When you know that there's something that you're passionate about, there's not a single thing that somebody can tell you that will change what you feel about what you're passionate about. There are a lot of people that are passionate about a lot of things. I'm passionate about a lot of things. i got a bunch of hobbies that I'm passionate about. You come and try to tell me you're better than me at my hobby. I'll tell you otherwise. Come, I'm just that passionate about it. But you tell me how passionate you are about your relationship with Christ, and I'll say, I want to know some more. Tell me more. Because why? If you can show me, if you can show the world the benefit of having an understanding of what Jesus did in your life, so much to the point where you need to keep him in your life, that's something that's worth talking about. That's something that's worth the world hearing. That's something that's worth your life changing over. Do you understand to acknowledge his sacrifice? Because here's the thing. When you choose joy, you're choosing all three of these things. You're choosing to understand that he is good. You're choosing to understand that his love is for you. And you're choosing to understand that his sacrifice has specifically been done for you. That's choosing joy. Why is that so important? And I want to close with this. And I want us to pray. Why is it so important for us to understand these three things? Because when you choose joy, to make a choice for the rest of your life, to choose joy and to choose to praise him, that means that these three things are engraved in your heart to understand, to know that he is good, that he loves you, that a sacrifice was made specifically for you. And that there's nobody in life, there's no one else in life, not even your spouse, not, not even your children. There's no one in life that's going to save you like Christ. But can I tell you this? You can introduce them to him and help them to see who the Savior really is. See, for me, choosing joy, it's no longer just a choice. It's my lifestyle. Every morning, I'm, I'm going to do that. That's me. My 2020, you ask me, I tell you, God's still on the throne. That's been my response every time. A oh, pastor, what do you think about this? There's so much hate in the world. Where's your God? I said, he's still there. Well, what about everybody that's fighting? Is God in their hearts? Because my God's still there and he's still in my heart. And I love them. People make the wrong decisions. What can, what can you say about that? What can you say? There's nothing that you can say that's going to change somebody's life, but there's everything that he can say through you that's going to change their life. Amen? But you got to understand that. If you don't understand the sacrifice, what are you going to tell people? If you don't understand how to choose joy, how can you tell somebody to choose joy every day? If you're not living it out, who's going to believe you? The choice is yours. This year, let your 2020 of November be different. Let your giving thanks be the cause and effect for somebody to get closer to God. Let the choices that you make for him change others' lives around you. Don't hesitate. And I said this on Friday. Hesitation stops you from your encounter with God. What does that mean, Pastor? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to make a decision and you hesitated and you missed out on that chance? I have. But let me share this with you. If you can eliminate hesitation out of your life for the things of Christ and you allow him to just work in your life and do his will through your life, when that hesitation is out, I promise you the encounters will start. What does the encounters mean? You will truly understand how God wants to use you and you will see how you can be used by God. And that it's not far. It's not something that you can't be a part of. 
It's not something that he has set you apart of because you're not good enough. No, he wants you to be a part of it. And when you choose him and when you choose joy and when you choose to praise him, to give him praise even through all the troubles, I promise you that joy will enter into your heart and it will last forever. You ask me, has anything changed from 2019 to 2020 with your relationship with God? Sure has. I've understand on a greater scale and a greater level how good God is. That even when my world, and, and, and many of us may have faced this before, when we pray and we preach and we talk and we read about the world and how we can change the world, some of us in our lives are like, but, but my world's good. Everything's good. But in your 2020, for some of us, it, it's actually changed. Actually trusting in God for finances have changed because all of a sudden you're not able to work. Okay, trusting God for your health has actually changed because everyone is scared about getting sick. Trusting in God has never been so real, but actually it's in every situation so far in 2020 it has, has been even more real. For some of us, it's like, can I even go outside? I'm scared. For some of us, it's the fear that has changed our life. But I want to tell you something. That fear goes away when you choose him. Because there's no fear in love and his love. And that's who he is. He's our joy, our peace, and our comfort. And I tell you, church, I choose joy. This morning, I want to ask you where you're at, and we're going to all stand to our feet. And I want you to get your heart in a place where you are ready to choose joy. So church, let's rise to our feet. Let me ask you, where are you in your decisions this morning? Have you woken up this morning to say, I choose joy? Or have you woken up this morning saying, I'm gonna just get through it? Have you woken up this morning to say, Lord, I choose to put you first? Or have you said to yourself, I can't wait to get home to do something else? Where's your heart at? And where are your choices? I, I, I just wanna challenge you. If today's the first time that you do it, choose joy and choose to put him first. See what happens. See what happens. The only thing in my life that I can bet you 100% is Christ. He's never let me down. I'll bet you 100% on Christ. If you put your life in his hands, see if something changes. I have that much trust in him. You've got a situation that you're going in, trust him. See what happens. Choose him. Choose joy. Choose to praise him. Choose to acknowledge that he is good. Choose to acknowledge that his love is for you. And choose to acknowledge that his sacrifice was made specifically for you. So this is what I want us to do. At this moment, ask yourself personally, in my life, Lord, how can I change my choices? Because I want to choose you. And I want to choose joy that it's not late for my 2020 to change. It's not late for me to get close with you. Ask the Lord, God, bring me closer to you. I wanna choose joy, I choose you this morning. Ask him. Let me pray over us. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for this message to help us to understand to choose joy because you are the only choice that actually changes our life. Not just our day, but our life. And Lord, there are many of us in this room, including myself, who want to say today that I choose joy and I choose you. That Lord, this is a scary decision. I don't know what it's like to put you actually in full trust because I've always done everything myself, Lord. But today I wanna to say, I'm gonna give it a shot. Will you be there for me? Just know that he is, church. Speak to him. Even if you haven't, all you have to say is, Lord, I choose you and I choose joy. See what he does for your day today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this message and we declare that you are good and we give you praise this morning. Lord, as this month is reminding us to give thanks, we give you glory and praises for all the things that you've done. I thank you for our health. I thank you for our businesses. I thank you for our families. I thank you so much for our education and our jobs and, 
everything that we have and we thank you for our church. I thank you for the ability for us to still worship with one another. And I thank you so much, Lord, that your love has never changed just because our world is. And we love you and we thank you and we give you all the praises in Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen. Church, this is what I want us to do. Let's go out and enjoy a meal with one another and give thanks and give praises to what God has done. And as you eat the food, don't just think, oh, this food is good, but think, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for everything that you have done. And church, if you need prayer, we're still going to be here. We'll see you outside.